So this is the question we're going to look at now is from the general exam and 47% of students miss this question. So almost half. Let's go ahead and go on to the topic of our general most difficult question. And just to recap for folks coming in, we've mined our database to understand the questions that are most missed by customers and students, student customers, when they take the practice exam. So this is the question we're gonna look at now is from the general exam. It is G4A06. And 47% of students miss this question. So almost half. And the question is, what is the purpose of an antenna tuner? And there's the four options. Uh, the first one is to reduce SWR in the feed line to the antenna. B is reduce the power dissipation in the feed line to the antenna. C is to increase the power transfer from the transmitter to the feed line. And D, all these choices are correct. And this can be, I get why this can be confusing because they're all basically saying the same thing about managing SWR or reducing power. So this is another one where it's kind of a definition of terms kind of thing. And the answer to this one, the correct answer to this one in the pool is C. Yeah, Josh, you got it. Um, C is uh, increased power transfer from the transmitter to the feed line. And I like to, I think that the term antenna tuner, as has become in common discussion, is a bit of a, I don't wanna say misinformation, but it's probably poorly named or poorly adopted as a, as a name because what this device is doing is it's not changing the antenna. What it is doing is it is matching the impedance of the antenna to the impedance of the radio for the most efficiency. So let's say your antenna has an impedance of 100 ohms. Your radio always wants to see 50 ohms. So somewhere in the middle, this antenna matching device, commonly known as an antenna tuner, is fixing that to make up the difference. So the radio sees 50 ohm, sees what it thinks is a 50 ohm antenna, even though that through the matching tool, it is up converting from 50 to 100 ohms to make that match the antenna better. So that is what the process is of increasing the power transfer. It takes that matching making sure the radio sees the 50 ohms so the radio is giving the most power it can because it thinks it's it's a one-to-one -one match and then it is using inductance to up upgrade and change the inductance of the uh to match more closely match the antenna so uh the antenna matching tool commonly known as an antenna tuner is what is doing that so let's talk a little bit about why it's not the other answers. Um, the power dissipates more at the point where the problematic matches, like heat. So let's say you have a 50, let's say you didn't have an antenna uh, matching tool or an antenna tuner. If you had a 50 ohm output of your radio into a 50 ohm uh, coax, it would then see 100 ohms at the feed point of the antenna in, in the same 100, uh, 100 ohm antenna scenario. The point where it needs to go from 100 ohms to 50 ohms, it's where the mismatch is, and that's going to result in power loss related to heat. So if you can improve the power transfer from the transmitter to the feed line and then into the antenna, you are improving that by not having the power dissipate uh, uh, in the match. So why B is wrong is because the power isn't dissipating in the feed line, it's dissipating at the match point. And then why A is wrong is 
the the SWR of the feed line is generally going to stay the same. The SWR of the antenna is going to be different, and that is shown in impedance, and that impedance is what we've been talking about. So that's why it's C, and obviously it can't be all of the above. So C is the right answer on this. What do you all? Um, what do y'all think of that? Uh, Sonny, Sonny likes the fact that antenna tuners are poorly named. I, I, and I agree. Um, I get asked sometimes, do I run an antenna tuner? And yeah, I do uh, in some cases, uh, but I don't in other cases. So like for Parks on the Air, uh, I use my ICOM IC705 and I use a closely matched antenna uh, that's pretty much set up for 20 and 40 meters, and those are the bands that I operate on for POTA. So I don't need much antenna matching. I'm willing to give up the small amount of power dissipation uh, that I'm going to have at the feed point uh, because I know that it's relatively closely matched and I don't need to, um, to do more to it. And it's one less thing into the process. So by using a better matched antenna, you can accomplish the same thing without using an antenna tuner or antenna matching tool. So I think that's a great way to think about it as you're trying to uh, do that. Uh, Sonny, glad you like the uh, uh, the focus on the missing questions and subject. That's, that's cool. Appreciate that. Any other thoughts? Only go on to the next slide and, and maybe that'll uh, talk a little bit more about this. Um, I, I grabbed a point from the lesson. So, so for folks who are coming along and saying, now what's an antenna tuner look like? So if you look at that box on the right next to the radio, uh, that is an LDG antenna tuner. And that is uh, designed to do what we've been talking about, match the, uh, the SWR or impedance uh, out from the radio and into the antenna. So uh, I've heard um, sayings that the LDGs are some of the better equipment out there. So, so that's why uh, that radio, the uh, I think that's the IC7000, if I remember right, that's an older radio I had. Uh, some of those don't have uh, built-in tuners. So uh, LDG makes these uh, outboard tuners. Um, the here from lesson 10, I grabbed the, the, the words here just so we can see what it looked like in the lesson, uh, in the general lesson. And uh, you can see the blue words, increased power transfer from the transmitter to the feed line. That's the answer to the question. And, uh, um, and, I, and I say it right there, it's not a substitute for a better performing antenna. It's a tool you have to optimize the performance hand. So if all you have is an, a tuner, is an antenna that has a bad match, you can still get something out of it. And that's a scenario I'm, I'm working in right now. I have uh, a relatively new antenna up in a relatively new uh, new house, and I it doesn't match well on all the bands. And uh, I'm using a radio with a built-in antenna tuner uh, and using it to match and getting the performance I can out of it uh, on the different bands. So, um, uh, eventually, someday down the road, I might have a dedicated 20 meter antenna, but for now, I have to use this compromise antenna and I use an antenna tuner to uh, match it to the radio as best possible to go forward. That is the radio and antenna analyzer or antenna tuner I had in a dedicated go kit I built that um, I was doing my woodworking and I made a go kit built out of wood and it was the heaviest damn thing that I had and there's a picture somewhere I don't have it with me but uh, I used that equipment and I uh, drove up from Atlanta to Cape Cod and I used that in an activation at Cape Cod so uh, I used it once or twice but uh, just hauling it out of the out of the uh, back of the car was a real chore uh, um, of course, I put not only the radio and tuner in it, but I put a battery and a power brick and uh, some other things that weighed it down. So I didn't help myself there, but just the fact it was made out of wood was not something that I would do again. 
We've helped over 60,000 students get their US FCC amateur radio license, and we can help you too, no matter your age or educational background. Go to www.hamradioprep.com and try a free lesson today.